Aloha and welcome. I'm Peter Rossig, and this is the Two Wheel Revolution here on thinktechhawaii.com. Uh, this is a show where we talk about micro mobility, personal mobility on electric devices like electric bikes, electric skateboards, electric unicycles, electric scooters, and eventually uh, we'll get to electric wheelchairs when I'm ready. But uh, tonight, today, we're going to talk about uh, the exception. We're not going to talk about a two-wheel device. We're going to talk about a one-wheel device, uh, which, appropriately enough, is called a one-wheel. And my guests today uh, are Josh Wheatley, who is with us from Virginia, where he is, uh, he hopes, temporarily uh, living before he gets back to Hawaii, and Randy Kamaheller, who is here in uh, Hawaii and is one of the founders of a group of people of enthusiasts. So welcome, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Peter. All right. So let's start with the obvious or the simple question. Uh, what is a one wheel? Randy, what is a one wheel? So a one wheel is a self-balancing motorized personal electric vehicle, basically. Similar to a skateboard, except with one wheel. And similar to a hoverboard, where once you get on it, you, once you engage it, it's up to you how you want to go, the amount of pressure you put on it, how fast you want to go. So it's okay, pretty neat. a picture of one, which is great. Uh, Josh, anything to add to that uh, def definition? You yeah, it's, it's, a, it's pretty accurate. Uh, it's a, it's a self-balancing board. So basically, it's, uh, it takes your inner peace and puts you even more at peace. It's pretty fun. You get on this sucker, and it, it emulates like uh, surfing, snowboarding, uh, a little bit of skateboarding, but Ultimately, it's just a whole lot of freedom. It's a lot of just freedom of you and the wheel and your friends and cruising around. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Oh, can you, is it different from, uh, I've seen electric skateboards with four wheels and usually uh, the rider's got a hand uh, device to uh, control it. Uh, so it's different from that, I take it. It is. Uh, it literally, boom, one wheel device as it goes level. You have yourself a, a machine that'll go, if you lean this way, it goes that way. You lean this way, it goes that way. Pretty fun stuff. Uh, if you're on, off-road, there's not too much terrain that it can't handle. And the better you get at it, just like anything, you become as skilled as Randy, who jumps off of things and slides off of stuff. And me, I just like to cruise nice and easy-peasy. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Is it hard to, you know, I, I've never ridden one. I've never uh, really been a, on a skateboard. So how's it going to be for me to get on one of these things? Have you ever right. snowboarded, skied, skateboarded, anything like that? Like, the only thing I've got is uh, kind of I used to ride at uh, the old, you know, the, the original Segway, the two wheel, side by side, two wheels. And it, it was it was self-balancing and it was also very intuitive. After about five minutes, I didn't even think about it. Uh, but that's that's yeah. my experience. What's it going to be like? Very if I similar. Get on one of these. Very similar. I can guarantee you'd be able to ride this thing within 10, 15 minutes at least. Get up on it, roll around a little bit. You might not have it mastered. No, you know, I still don't have it mastered. I've been riding five years now, but yeah, you'll definitely be able to get up and have fun within 15, 20 minutes. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, right. if you can stand, you're you're able to ride. It's pretty simple. Most, most people have someone Excuse standing in front of them and hold their hands for just a second as most of us do learning how to walk or anything of the sort you put your hands out you hold on to somebody and you feel the balance once you felt the balance the rest is up to you uh it's it's pretty simple it's a lot of ankle work it's a lot of knee work and a lot of hip work but you keep your core centered and uh very intuitive once you feel the electric vibe of everything it uh becomes second nature uh, josh how long have you been riding randy said about five years how, well, how about you yeah, it was 2018 when they came out with the XR from Future Motion, um, and uh, it was their second version of the one wheel. And uh, I called a midlife crisis. I don't know, but I went ahead and scooped one of those up, and within three days, uh, uh, I learned quickly to wear pads. You know, yeah, uh, very important. Uh, but uh, just like with anything, you you, you, save, you stay safe on it, and, uh, and and it'll treat you as well as you treat it. So. Um, uh, it's it's definitely 2018. I think it's when I first picked my my first one up is in February, I think, of 2018. So yeah, I've been riding for quite some time, many miles. And you you raise the, the my next question really, and that is what what is what do you do about safety? 
Oh, it's super huge. Uh, I'd highly suggest anyone starting off on one of these to at least, at least have a helmet, of course. That's first and foremost. you got to protect that noggin. Um, and, and then secondly, I would suggest wrist guards. Uh, because of the angle of where you stand on this board, you're very like a surfboard, like a snowboard. Your uh, forward foot is is, is uh, turned to the side there. So when you when you do eventually there's two types of riders right randy one that has fallen and one that will fall so you will fall down it, it will happen <laughs> um and, and and the wrists and hands are the first things that kind of take your the brunt of anything so um i can say i've broken my wrist i've had stitches uh, uh randy has a knot on his elbow right now that's probably the size of my head uh, you, you know so we, we've done our damage to ourselves over the uh, so, years so we're, in, you're having trouble here convincing people who've never ridden to uh to ride but it's realistic you're you know anything like this there's always you know you can be careful you get better be careful you better have safety equipment but no matter how how uh, much you do, there's a risk involved. I think that's fair. And and with that risk, you know, there's a a lot of reward. With great risk, there's great reward. So it's uh, it's all within your limitations. You know, if you're just taking nice and easy and you're staying on the path, a nice paved path, oh gosh, uh, anyone can do it from 80 years old to 8 years old. So anyone can get on it and do it. Um, it's a matter of how extreme you want to take it. You know, anyone can ride a bike, but some people jump off of uh, ramps and what have you. So <laughs> just that's more Randy and our speed. <laughs> We, you know, we see a lot of people doing in, in skateboard parks, doing these in these kind of bowls, bowls, and they're going up and slipping around. Is that the sort of thing you would do, or is that is that really just for a, a non-electric uh, four wheel? Uh, I don't want to confirm or deny, but yeah, we one, have... at, one at a time. <laughs> let me let me start with Randy. What what do you say? Sorry, no, yeah. So that's kind of we've kind of tried our luck at it. And the boards take a beating, you know, because it's it's concrete and stuff. But I mean, yeah, we're definitely trying to progress into that. That's kind of the next stage of it, right? And you can only do so much on flat land, and that's kind of where this thing is going now. There's yeah. guys in the mainland like Kyle Hansen and um, Brendan Shermer who are like using these things called flight fins that you attach to your one wheel, and your feet kind of get locked in. Where yeah, uh -huh. they they are like riding around skate parks like the skateboarder, you know, they're doing tricks, hitting the hips, coming over, doing transitions. So the sport is definitely taking off and it's progressing, yeah. and it's really like cool to see how fast it's it's going, you know, taking off in the way it is. Really well, but for most of us, it's not going to be flipping the board or flipping, no. you know, that kind of stuff. I would think because <laughs> just like any sport, it, the pros can do it, but the amateurs better be careful, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the Hawaii float. Randy, you're you're we're one of the founders or the founder of the float. Tell us what that's all about. Well, so it, it started out, it was just a few of us that we used to meet up and ride, you know. I mean, these things are expensive, so it's not like they were going around a lot before COVID and stuff. Once COVID hit a lot more people have their stimulus checks or whatever, you know, wherever people got money from, they started buying, you know, you just started seeing more and more. So our group started out, there was literally the two of us, then there was four of us, then there was six of us. And now I'd say there's, you know, we're in the hundreds now as far as the group, not every night on a Friday night, but we meet up and we'll run like 30 to 40 people out there, you wow. know, on a good night. And, and where do you start? Yeah, it's we, so there's different locations. We usually meet up in town by Kakako across from Bike Factory. Shout okay. out to Bike Factory, if that's okay. Shout out to Bike um, Factory. Yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we meet out. It seems to be a pretty good central place. We have a good vibe. You ride from there to Kakako to Magic Island to the fountain in Waikiki, and it's just a good vibe in Waikiki. And everybody wears their gear, everybody's safe, and everybody has fun. So it's it's one of our stops. That we so if I show up without a helmet and say, can I ride with you? Uh, do you guys tell me to go home or uh, what's the deal? Uh, I usually got an extra helmet or somebody else does, but I mean, you're welcome to ride yeah. however you want to ride. You, you, you know, you're, you're your own man, you're your own woman, man, whatever, you know, you oh. do what you do. Like, okay. But you I would mean, definitely say, not... you sure you want, wouldn't you rather have a helmet? Wouldn't I, I would. 
I would. I've, I've learned the hard way, like Josh has said. I've got knocked out. I've got staples and stuff like that. So to each his own, I definitely yeah. highly recommend them. You know, and um, what's kind of cool about the mainline is like they're kind of making it a mandatory thing, which I was kind of talking to my buddy Steve here, who is the founder actually of Hawaii Flow Sessions. Um, what's that name again? We're trying to. So it's a uh, Hawaii Float Sessions, which yeah, is but who's the, the who is the founder? For it. So it's Stephen um, Nablato. He's he's a good friend. Uh, okay. He's on Instagram at Hawaii Float Sessions. Would okay. be his Instagram tag, and um, is that where we? Would I mean, look it's all about more? us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's all about the group, though. I mean, we kind of started it. He kind of came in, and we just kind of took over the name Hawaii Float Sessions. But it's always been. At first, it was um, Oahu One Wheel, which is how I met Josh over uh -huh. that. He just saw videos of mine that I would post about the rides here. And I just, I, I kind of got into editing, which is another beautiful thing about One Wheel, where like I didn't realize how much fun I'd have like actually videoing other people riding and doing the editing and going through it. And just that whole sequence of doing that, that whole, it's just. It's just another whole element of it. And it's, it's how I met Josh, like I said. So he actually would contact me and like, hey, man, I, I saw your video. You know, that's, that's awesome. You know, you make me want to move to Hawaii. And he actually moved I to did. Hawaii. So you can finish that, Josh. I mean, you moved, yeah, to, I mean Hawaii to, you moved to Hawaii to, do, to join the One Wheel? I, I wouldn't say I'd go that far. My wife will kill me. No, but we we uh, we had an opportunity to move to Hawaii. My wife and I, but I didn't know anybody on Oahu uh, specifically. I know a lot of people in Kauai, but I didn't know anybody on Oahu. And I reached out to Randy when I first got to the island, and um, I, I've been floating for quite some time. And there's there's a, a joy in floating by yourself. Sure, they call it float therapy, but there is just something just. Uh, more better. <laughs> it's more better when you get the whole crew together and we can just all float together, keep everybody safe too. And so I reached out to Randy and I said, man, I've been watching your videos and I would love to to find some cool trails. You guys have some amazing trails. And man, uh, Randy showed me a little spot on a map, you know, said show up here first thing in the morning. And I did. And, um, I, I couldn't be happier uh, that he that he did. I was the slowest one. I couldn't keep up with all of them because they know the trails like the back of their hand. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I I come in happy and smiling like a little uh, bearded turtle, <laughs> umi umi honu, and these guys got jerseys and 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 the crew got together and we all got jerseys and numbers and, and just uh, there's a lot of pride and a lot of uh, he under he made it an understatement when he said it's a great a good time it's a great time when we get together through going through Waikiki and sharing the aloha and just spreading that amazing vibe and 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 uh, good energy just always good energy I've I've so many amazing stories from the friends I've meet, met and, and, and have to this day from just a simple nerdy little one wheel that we all wanted to get together and ride together, you know, uh, made some amazing friendships over. Wow. That's terrific. I got to say, I really, you see them more and more on the streets of, of Honolulu and I, I rarely seen a, anybody go by that wasn't basically smiling. Uh, <laughs> it's like uh, whether you're commuting to work or just out for a, for a float or a cruise or whatever, people really seem to enjoy it. So that's, you know, that's a great recommendation to me. Have you ever seen anyone on a surfboard looking angry? You know, so it's the same vibe. <laughs> I have. <laughs> okay, good, good, good comparison. So you brought something up, and and uh, it's not just a, a street or or a pavement kind of device. It uh, you can also go off road with it, so to speak. And we've got a little video, and uh, why don't we see that video now and and uh, see what the possibilities, some of the possibilities are. All right, where where was that, Randy? Oh, so that's actually a, a place we call Disneyland. Um, <laughs> and it's you don't a secret you don't have spot. to tell us <laughs> where it is if you don't yeah, want there's to. Yeah, there's better spots down the road. <laughs> yeah. We I mean, better keep that one a it's secret. It's kind of a secret spot. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, all right. Um, yeah, is that so Disneyland it's... and... Yeah. It's just like surfing then, right? You don't want to give away too much about your good surf spots. I got that. Yeah, I well, we take pride in that spot, and uh, we actually take time to go out there and rake and pick up trash and 
Uh huh. You know, like Absolutely. we take care of that spot. We take pride in that place. We've been going out there for for quite a few years now. Yeah, people well, coming past absolutely. through there and you know we see trash and stuff out there and it's like we know it's not our trash so we try to keep it to a minimum if you find it out there god bless you have fun be safe but you know yeah we call it uh, yeah. it's, i was it's just riding on, on the pearl city bike path on a, a tricycle actually and uh you know that's a, <laughs> that's a great path but it gets uh mm -hmm. overloaded with trash and everybody you know their periodic cleanups and uh but uh, unfortunately people just can't seem to respect something like that mm -hmm. and want to leave cars and everything else behind it's uh one of the tragedies of urban life i guess but uh so the uh how long if you're doing that trail and don't tell us where it is but how how long <laughs> say you how long is that trail half a mile a mile or where you could before you have to you uh, turn around or whatever i'll take this one so randy uh has been riding for quite some time and all the guys on the island they have upgrades that you can do to these boards peter so uh that particular trails i mean we we put easily 10 to 15 miles um a day when we go and do a route through that yeah so but that's nothing compared to kakahako all the way up diamond head and back uh in one evening we'll, we'll end up putting 18 miles or so 20 miles on a board and you have to have legs of steel for that so sometimes these guys ride real hard but there's a lot of fun upgrades you can do with the older models the newer models they come equipped with i believe it's about 25 to 30 mile range um fully charged so they they uh, fully capable in fact you mentioned the pearl harbor uh, bike trail which is a great trail we have a good friend who uh we, i call him the island doctor but uh brother jay um he takes care of all of our one wheels he's a little electrical genius and he uh tweaks them up when we bang them up and all that fun stuff and he rides all the way from eva to pearl city every day down that path and what a what a beautiful way he's saving on gas and just has this nice zen moment to clear your head before you get to work and man there's nothing better yeah out there that's interesting so uh i what an older model, let's say, not this new one that's got a twenty-five or so mile range. What's the typical range on a, a you know, on a regular run-of-the-mill model? About fifteen to eighteen miles on a full charge, depending on your weight and and how hard you're riding it. It definitely changes a lot of the variables, but correct, correct. Uh, it, it definitely helps. And actually, it's a fun thing when you're going downhill. You mentioned that. Um, they have this thing called regenerative power. So you can regenerate power as you go downhill, which is a pretty nice uh, feature. You get an extra mile or two range. Yeah. All right. Uh, and, and how long, if, if I've run my board out to almost empty or empty, how long does it take to recharge? I'd say about an hour, uh, about an hour or so. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not... So depending on your charge, you can get fast charge. By. You yeah. fast chargers and, ahead, and yes. make it even faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. And that all comes, the charger, all that kind of stuff comes with the kit, I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on the island, one of the more notorious places, again, Bike Factory uh, sells them in, 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 uh, in house there locally on the island. So that's, that's good to support local. All right. And there, um, what's the, w w I suppose there's a warranty when you get a new one, but what, how, how often do these things go frick, go the fritz on you or have to be repaired? <laughs> it just depends on uh, what, what, you, right? what yeah. you've done to it. I know it depends on what you, you know, what you wrote it into, but, uh, you know, in general, are they pretty good, good machines or, or, uh, yeah. you know, doesn't seem like there's a lot of loose stuff hanging off it that could get broken no. or whatever. No, but I, these are I just like a tank. All right, yeah. but Josh, I noticed yeah. your boards look a little bit. Uh, we have that picture that was just up on the screen. Uh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> Those boards look like they've uh, been 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 ridden once or twice. They have, and they definitely have some love. Everyone kind of uh, puts your own flavor into it if you will so i've customed a lot of things custom bags and things of that nature uh, there's a lot of different great companies out there third-party uh companies uh that sell aftermarket stuff for the one wheel so you can really kind of make it your own they've got treaded tires they have slick tires they're all air filled tires so it's kind of it's like going to a car show and seeing two of the same cars it's not really going to happen you know so uh, yeah make them your own and on the mainland, in, uh, like you're in Virginia, have you found uh, float groups or have you found other enthusiasts or are you kind of the Lone Ranger when you're out riding around? 
Um, particularly right now, being that I just moved back from Hawaii, um, I have not found a new click here, but I know there are a lot of DC riders that go ride through down Washington, DC. Uh, in fact, Javier, he's the number one rider in the world, uh, with his, uh, can't even say, I don't want to say a wrong number, but he's well over the 18 to 20,000 mile range on his, on his board. Yeah. And we have a locally in Oahu there have a uh, Fiesta Mike, a little shout out to him. Fiesta Mike is number four. Five now, Randy, or four in the world uh, with miles. Five. I think he's five now. Yeah. He's got a lot of miles. I want to say he's at 16 or 17,000 miles on his one board. So <laughs> that, that is, that's durability. I don't know if I can keep my car going that long. So, uh, no, that's right. terrific. Yeah. so Randy, would, uh, if I show up, again, if I show up and I bring my helmet and I show up in Kakako, uh, it's Friday nights, right? So yeah. what, what's going to happen when I show up there? What do I do? Do I look for you? Do I look for somebody else? Tell me about showing up as a, a complete newbie for the first time uh, at the Hawaii oh, Sports. Yeah. Well, it pretty much happens every week. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of it. Like, as we're riding, we'll see people and they'll be like, hey, I see you guys. Can I come out? And we're like, yeah. You know, what we run into a lot is people will see us riding and they're like, yeah, I mean, I see you guys all the time, but I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous to come out. You know, I'm not that good of a rider and stuff like that. And the thing with us is like, yeah, people are going to go fast. They're going to be doing their own thing, but there is no speed limit. You know, you go at your own pace, you you know, only you know your limits. So you just stick to your limits. If, if you came out, you'd be encouraged to like get better and you'd be like surrounded with people who are just trying to have fun and are trying to make sure you get better, make sure you're comfortable. I mean, there's no pressure. It's not like, oh, man, come on. That's all you got. You know, it's more like, right on, welcome to the family. Immediately. Uh, yeah, you feel welcome. For sure. Immediately. Yeah, and as for firsthand, somebody who didn't know anybody in this crew, even though it was years ago that I joined, I, I, I didn't know anyone, and all I did was just try to keep up as best I could. And they're, they always will stop at certain points to make sure everybody's gathered up. Uh, that we didn't lose anybody along the path, you know, it's very respectful that way. And it's beyond just uh, uh, the, the pushing yourself to get better. It, it's it's in life too. I've had some great conversations with some of these, the, the group of guys and, and vibes that are out there. Uh, people that just need someone to float with, don't even like to talk sometimes. They'll just come out and ride with us. And, and, and we accept everyone from all shapes and sizes of life. It's a beautiful thing. The Aloha is very strong with the Hawaii Float Sesh crew. Yeah. That's terrific. And what have at the end? Does everybody go for a, a, a Coke or an adult beverage? Or what, what happens if the, when you reach the finale? Or does everybody, I guess people have to head back somehow. Yeah, people break off at their own times. And, you know, and they're, yeah, you know, I got to go here. People, a lot of people live in riding distance and they ride to the meetup and then ride home from there, which is nice, you know. Um, yeah, everybody mm -hmm. just kind of breaks off the, in their own groups. People do go have adult beverages. People do go have coats. People do go have late night food, you know. Um, mm -hmm. what is one it's of always devices? interesting getting back. <laughs> getting back. Is all yeah. Like when you do a swim, you finally fall out of the water and you think, geez, where did I leave my slippers? So uh, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. But you, you can carry this sort of thing on a, on the bus, right? I mean, you or any kind of, you know, I mean, uh, the train, if you happen to be going in that neighborhood, but you can pick it up. How, how much does one of these guys weigh? They're, they're pretty heavy. I mean, 30 pounds. Oh, Josh, going to show off here. Come on, thirty. What do you What do you say? What's the weight? Uh, they're actually about 20, 25, uh, 25 pounds. Like, it depends they on what you get on there. Thirty pounds. Yeah. yeah, I've got a lot of stuff on mine, so they yeah. get heavier. <laughs> but you can. There is a handle or a place where you can hold onto it and pick it up and uh, and sling it up on the bus and and get back yep. to wherever you're going. Right. So you're not absolutely. You know, uh, you can put a bicycle on the front of a bus, but sometimes, uh, you know, the bike racks are taken, and uh, I don't think you can get a scooter on a bike on a bus these days yet. So who knows? But, well, so this is pretty actually, versatile in terms of what it can what it can do. Yeah. Actually, yeah. There's two two different models. There's a Pint X, and then there's a GT. So the GT is the bigger, weighs about twenty seven pounds, twenty eight pounds. 
stock. And then the Pint X is about uh, about 22 pounds, so it's really quite versatile. The, the range is different for both of them, of course, and uh, I don't want to give inaccurate statements on how long they are, but they've definitely upgraded them, the Pint X and the and the uh, bigger version, the GT. They can go a pretty long distance in a very about 25 pounds, so yeah. Anyway, so, start on the bus and you either go to the bike factory here in Honolulu, or I imagine onewheel.com will get you to the... Yeah, the website. We're reaching the end of our show, and I really appreciate you guys talking about it because, uh, as you figured out, I've kind of seen it go by, but I've never really understood that much about riding them. And and it looks like fun, but then I, you know, you guys really bring that home. Let me give you each a minute and say, you know, if you want to say something else or how, or what you tell people who ask you, uh, you got a minute to get them on a board. What would you say to them? Randy, why don't you start out? What's your, uh, anything else you want to add? No, oh, like I said, it's, it's all about just having fun on it. Um, cool. being original, right. Yeah. Doing your own thing, man. It's, it's, the, it's freedom for me. It's therapy. You uh -huh. know, it's, it's right. literally when I'm on the board, it's like, that's all you're thinking about. No, troubles, than a no, worries, right? no bills. Definitely, you know, you pay right. one lump sum and then you use it as much as you want, you know. Cool. <laughs> That's right. Thank Randy, you. Uh, sorry, Josh, give us your last, your last word here. I, I mean, I would, like I said earlier, this is definitely great risk, great reward. I would suggest anyone try it. Make sure you wear the safety gear and don't be afraid to just go up to anyone else that has a one wheel and say, hey, I want wheel too, because you meet some of the best people on the planet and you do. We're all just happy floaters and, and that's what we'll continue to do. Float, float, aloha. All right. That's terrific. I really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, this has been the Two Wheel Revolution, talking about the One Wheel, which you can find at, uh, at the Bike Factory or perhaps some other stores here, and you can find it online. Uh, I, I encourage people to give it a try, and uh, if you get to the point that you can go a block or two, show up for the Hawaii float and meet some very interesting people, men and women. Uh, so this has been Think Tech Hawaii, the Two Wheel Revolution. I'm Peter Rossick. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Aloha, guys. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching ThinkTech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.